insert bloopers here. And if you're seeing this, then I didn't have any bloopers and I couldn't think of anything else for a cold open, so there you go. Greetings one and all and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, today's video is going to be a sequel or follow-up of sorts to a video that I brought you guys back last uh, September, I think it was. Uh, you see, those of you who know me, uh, have been following me for long enough, know that uh, ever since I got into vinyl about five years ago, I have been slowly but surely replacing some of my favorite uh, CD titles with their vinyl counterparts, or trading up, as I like to call it, uh, to vinyl. And uh, back last September, I did a video where I talked about the albums that I had done that with so far. And there was, what, a, a good dozen of them or so? And there was also a, a handful of them that I actually still had CDs of that I've uh, kept for whatever reasons. Well, um, in the past nine months, ten months, I have added to that list a bit, so I thought I would do a follow-up and uh, expand the list for you guys. So yes, some more albums that I have enjoyed enough that I've decided to pick up the vinyl uh, editions of and trade in the CDs, sell them to the stores for trade credit. And I will be following up this main list of 10 items with some other ones that I have on more than one format, whether they're uh, vinyl and CD or vinyl and cassette, and in, in a few cases, uh, CD and cassette. So it's just a huge mixed bag of stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, when I did the last video, I talked about the classic stuff like from the 80s and stuff first. So I thought I would do the, uh, the more contemporary stuff lead off with here. Uh, first one is an interesting instrumental album by Ry Cooder and Manuel Galvan. It's called Mambo Sin Window, and this is a very, very good album of, uh, it's, it's kind of a uh, foil cover, so it's a little hard to see with, uh, without the light on it. Uh, it is in a uh, Mambo album, as the title suggests, instrumental, very, very good Latin uh, jazz. It's, it's really Latin jazz, even though it's, uh, you know, Ry Cooter is more of a rock artist uh, pretty much overall his career. But yes, this is a wonderful album. A friend of mine who lives down in San Diego uh, first got a hold of the album back on, on CD, and he introduced me to it, and I didn't like it at first, but somehow it was infectious. It really got my attention and grew on me, and so I picked it up on CD, had the CD for many years, and then just uh, in the last six or seven months, I saw it on vinyl at my local record store and picked it up, and every bit as wonderful on vinyl as it was on CD. And then another one that I had for a long time on CD was Ben Lee's album. This is his fifth album, I believe, Awake is the New Sleep. One of my favorite albums of all time, and it's just fantastic. And uh, yes, it uh, just came out last year. Oh no, 2015. <laughs> so it's been around for a while on vinyl. And uh, they were having a sale on, on, at uh, New West Records online. That's the record label. So I decided I had to pick it up on sale. I just, uh, I love that album. Ben Lee has kind of, his last few albums have been a little bit weird, in my opinion, you know, for, from, from what I like, from what I'm used to. Uh, they've gotten a little weird, but this was kind of him in his prime, was Awakened is the New Sleep. So if you have not checked that album out, uh, in my opinion, that is his best album. So check it out. And then uh, Sam Smith. Uh, this was actually being sold as a used new arrival, but it was actually still sealed. So the person that sold it to the store had never bothered opening it. But yes, this is the Drowning Shadows edition of In the Lonely Hour. So, And I had had uh, his first two albums on CD and picked this one up and in quick succession I picked up the uh, the, the follow-up as well on LP. Wonderful stuff. I mean, you know, what can you say about Sam Smith? I mean, he's, he's, just, he's just great. And yes, I do have his most recent album on vinyl as well. So actually, these next two have put out three albums thus far, each artist, and I've picked all three of them up on vinyl, uh, traded in the CDs for them. Tom O'Dell is uh, this one here. This is his sophomore album, Wrong Crowd. He is fantastic, and his new album is just about to come out, actually and I'm very anxiously awaiting that one. <clears throat> and yes, a singer-songwriter from the UK. Great uh, stuff, kind of moody in a lot of places. So, and he's got a very interesting voice, and it might not be everybody's cup of tea. You know, those of you who've watched me long enough, you know that I have a thing for idiosyncratic voices. And yeah, he's he puts kind of a, a mournful wail on some of his, his vocals in some songs. I think more so on his debut album than on this one, but still. I mean, his song stylings and his vocals and his instrumental talents are just great. Uh, check out Tom O'Dell if you haven't yet. And then another one who has garnered a lot of attention, particularly since 2018, yes, when this album was released in 2018, it won the Grammy Award for Album of the Year. We are talking Casey Musgraves. And uh, yeah, as, as 
not long after it won Album of the Year, I decided I wanted to uh, pick this up on vinyl, and I very easily found her first and second album on vinyl as well. So that's yeah. it's kind of a thing with me when I pick up one album on vinyl, when you know when I'm like transitioning from CD to vinyl. I have to, there's some compulsion in me that I have to, in very quick succession, pick up all of their albums on vinyl. I, my pocketbook doesn't like it necessarily, but it, it satisfies that. I don't know if it's an OCD or uh, whatever it is, but anyway. And now we're going to move on to the classic stuff, uh, stuff mostly from the 80s here. Uh, this first one is a Scottish rock band that uh, most of you have pro probably at least heard of, Big Country. Uh, here in the States, they basically were known as a one-hit wonder for their song, In a Big Country. Great song, but uh, there's just so much more to this band than that song. Uh, this is their sophomore album, Steel Town, and uh, House of Records actually had their first four albums, uh, and the most expensive one of the bunch was $4.95, uh, so I decided to pick them all up, uh, used, of course, in the used section. And yet so many great songs came out of this band, and it was actually my brother was the one that initially got into big country way back in the day. Uh, and you know, he, he's one of the few Americans that uh, knew them for more than just that one song. He loved their stuff so much, and I didn't start appreciating them until way, way later, many, many years later. But uh, yeah, I had their first three albums on CD, and actually they were the remastered editions with bonus tracks. And I just, I, I like the albums so much that I decided to forsake the bonus tracks and just go for the albums just because I was getting so much into vinyl. And uh, yeah, I, I don't regret it. I don't miss the bonus tracks, uh, most of which are available on one of their EPs, which I don't have yet. But uh, yeah, I'll get, cross that bridge when I come to it, I guess, when I see it in the stores. And then this next artist, though, uh, same story, but I was into these guys way back in the in the day, in the beginning, when they started out. Culture Club, this is their sophomore album, Kissing to be Clever, I think, uh, or, or is it their debut? Uh, their other album, Colored by Numbers, is the other one that I have on vinyl that I used to have on CD. And, and again, kind of like Big Country, I had the bonus track editions on CD, the remastered, but I decided to give them up mainly because I realized that uh, this edition of Kissing to be Clever has the song on it that was originally not on the album. Time, Clock of the Heart was one of my favorite songs of theirs, and it was only it was originally released as a non-album single. And in, I think, only the States, the only the U.S. version of the album, they added that song to the album later, for later pressing. And uh, it's on here, so... And then these next two are uh, 80s pop rock male singer-songwriters that are very, very good. Uh, Steve Winwood is this one, and this is his album, Roll With It. I like his, uh, I don't know if it's his uh, previous album or his next album, Back in the High Life. I like that one a little bit more. It has a few more of his more popular songs on it, but this was actually the one that I originally had on CD. I did not originally have the other one on vinyl, so that's why I'm showing this one here. Uh, the title track is one of his best songs, Roll With It, fantastic, and uh, I mean the whole album is really good. And then we have the other male pop rock singer-songwriter is a Canadian gent. So those of you watching from Canada will appreciate this. Brian Adams, the, the Bruce Springsteen of Canada, I guess you could probably call him. He's just one of my favorite Canadian musicians of all time, and this album pretty much proves why. If you have not checked out Reckless, you've got to check it out. This has pretty much all of his... It's just packed with his big, big hits. Uh, one Night Love Affair, that was one of his smaller hits, but it's one of my favorite songs of his. Uh, Run to You and Heaven and Summer of 69, Kids Want to Rock. I mean, it's, it's just the entire track listing is great, great songs. I've got two or three of his other albums on LP as well. So. And now since I started the first list in this video with a jazz-ish title, I thought I would end it with a jazz title, a slightly older one in this case. It is Sign of the Times by Bob James. And I probably would not have come home with this album uh, if it weren't on the freebie shelf at House of Records, so yeah, I got it for zero dollars and zero cents. Um, because I had the CD of this one, it was originally owned by my sister. I kind of didn't want to give up the CD, but then, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I, I mentioned this recently in a recent video that, you know, I'm only going to be around for so many more years, so it's kind of, you know, that played into it as well, but regardless of the format it's on, whenever I listen to this album, I think of my sister because it was in my sister's collection. So, yes, a very, very fine jazz album by Bob James. I actually picked it up along with another one of his albums that I had also owned on CD. So, but yeah, uh, in the end, not really any regrets uh, giving up 
the CD copy that was originally owned by my sister, because it's a, a very, very good album of wonderful stuff. Great jazz artist, Bob James. And now on to the second half of this video. Yeah, the, the first list was 10 items, and I think this list is also 10 items. And uh, this is, and I did this also in my first uh, Flippin' Discs video that I will link to at the end of this video. Uh, this is a list of uh, albums that I own on more than one format. Yes, that I, I owned on CD, this first part of this list anyway, I owned on CD and picked up the LPs and decided to retain the CDs for whatever reason. And uh, so yeah, let's just dig right on into uh, this. And the first one here is Tangerine Dream with their album Lily on the Beach. And yes, there's the uh, CD copy as well. And uh, yes, one of my favorite, this this is probably my favorite Tangerine Dream album. Uh, bearing in mind though, there's a, there's a caveat with this. And as I've mentioned, there are private music releases before the, the, the label that these albums were on, that they were on for a short time. Uh, the private music releases of Tangerine Dream were very different from the rest of their discography. Their other albums were much more ambient, uh, longer songs, uh, but the songs on their private music releases are shorter and with much more of an emphasis on melody or rhythm. So just, just to give you a fair warning, uh, that if you're a Tangerine Dream listener and you have not listened to their private music releases, you're in for something different, just to let you know. But yes, uh, as I said, Lily on the Beach is probably my favorite album of theirs, uh, but the reason I kept it on CD is because uh, since it's purely electronic music, this is basically the format that it was meant to be heard on, I guess you'd say. So, you know, has absolutely no background noise like pops and clicks and, and that kind of thing. So that's the reason I've kept uh, this album, as well as the previous one, Optical Race, I have on both LP and CD. So, yeah. And then another jazz slash bluegrass uh, album. Well, Tangerine Dream is not bluegrass. <laughs> Let's get that one perfectly clear. Uh, the Goat Rodeo Sessions. This is a quartet of classical and bluegrass musicians. I love these albums. I first owned this one on CD. I actually picked up their second one on CD, and I was kind of thinking about getting getting it on LP. You know, should I or shouldn't I? And uh, obviously, I eventually did. And but the reason I'm keeping the CDs is because uh, is it this one? Yeah, this one is spread over two LPs, and it really didn't need to be. I don't think it's not that long, and so. You know, I keep the CD for when I want to listen to the entire thing without having to get up three times in the middle of it. So that, that's the reason. If, if I feel like, you know, expending physical energy, I'll put the LP on. Uh, silly, flimsy excuse maybe, but that's my excuse. And then the next one, we're moving on to a rock band. They're called Coin, and this is their self-titled debut album. And I picked this up at Skip's Going Out of Business Sale. And yes, I almost got rid of the CD as well, but... Uh, not for a couple of different reasons I hung on to it. First of all, for some reason, the CD is very hard to find. I mean, I go onto Amazon sometimes. I haven't done so in a while, but when I did, it appeared to be out of print and was on sale for a really crazy aftermarket price. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and hold on to it for that reason, but also because their sophomore album was never put out on LP as far as I can tell, unless maybe it's uh, available only as an import, in which case it would be ridiculously expensive. And I like Coin, but I don't like them that much. So that's why I'm keeping their first album on CD is because I have their second. I, I, I like to be consistent, uniform like that. And with this next artist, that's another uh, glimpse into that little part of my warped little brain. Uh, Duran Duran with their album Paper Gods. I got this one at um, FYE up in Salem, Oregon, and they were having a uh, sale on their LPs. Buy one, get one at 50% off or something like that. And this one was part of the sale, so I picked it up. And the only reason I am holding on to the CD is partly because the CD has bonus tracks, but also because uh, I have the whole rest of their discography on CD. If I take this one out of it, it's kind of, you know, I'm going to have an inc incomplete set. So, yes, that's, that's the completest part of my strange little brain. And then I have the last one that I have on LP and CD is Basha with her album Time and Tide. She is a Polish jazz uh, vocalist and she operates primarily in the bossa nova genre or uh, bossa nova flavored more often than not but yes nice beautiful smooth vocals and great uh, wonderful laid-back rhythms on her music if you haven't checked her out wonderful 80s artist one of my favorite 80s artists of all time actually and it, it still kind of surprises me that i got into her way back then because jazz just didn't seem to be my thing but for some reason i glommed onto her music and yes and i only keep the 
CD version of it because this is a two disc version that has a huge amount of extra songs, uh, B-sides, remixes, instrumentals, and stuff. So uh, yeah, hang on to this one definitely. So, And now I've decided to boldly go where no flippin' discs video has gone before and uh, shake things up a bit by talking about cassettes. So yes, uh, at the time that I did the last flippin' discs video, I was not into cassettes yet and they have, uh, uh, in the recent months, have accumulated them at a dizzying pace. So I decided why not bring them in on the fun as well. So the first specimen in that part of the list is Lionel Richie with his album Can't Slow Down. And yes, I did just recently show the uh, cassette in, I believe it was a Rescue Records video, my first Rescue Records video. Found this on the freebie shelf at House of Records, so it's like, you know, why not? And this is actually one of the few albums that I have, or maybe not so few, <laughs> if I start thinking I might come up with a list, uh, that I have owned on all three major formats because before I got the uh, LP, I got the LP actually at a yard sale about 10 years ago, I think it was. So, and along with another stack of like uh, 15 or 20 80s LPs. So yeah, a good score at that garage sale. Um, yeah, I had the two disc deluxe edition uh, CD release of Can't Slow Down. And, but as soon as I got the LP, I decided to go ahead and get rid of the CD. And so yeah, good stuff. Uh, what can you say? It's one of the classic albums of the 80s. And then uh, uh, along with the, the same lines, the same format, LP and CD, and also continuing along the lines of uh, 80s African-American male artists posing with chairs, we have George Benson. See? Two guys posing with chairs from the 80s. I'm not lying. Uh, yes, George Benson with his album 2020. And uh, yes, it's. I actually found this one on the Freebie Shelf at House of Records as well as the cassette on the Freebie Shelf at House of Records. So. A, a double whammy freebie score. So yeah, being an 80s kid, I'm a fan of George Benson's uh, vocal era from the 80s for you know, much, much earlier than I was of his instrumental stuff. His album, Give Me the Night, was one of the best of the 80s, in my opinion. The title track was amazing. One of my favorite songs from the 80s. So yeah, never afraid to add some George Benson to my collection, uh, no matter what the format. And then to round out this list, my final three items are ones that I have on CD and cassette. So yes, I'm just mixing everything up, aren't I? So yeah, the, the first one here is another 80s artist, along with George Benson and uh, Lionel Richie. Billy Joel, River of Dreams, uh, probably my favorite Billy Joel album. I've owned this on CD for, actually not for too long, for a couple of years. A friend of mine who is a fellow YouTuber, uh, Billy Joel is his favorite artist, and he uh, convinced me to... Uh, forsake the greatest hits, the four disc greatest hits collection that I had, and pick up his his uh, individual studio albums, and uh, one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. I do not regret it at all. And he is actually the one who also sent me the cassette version of uh, River of Dreams. Uh, he just had no use for it anymore. He was uh, needed to conserve space and get rid of some stuff that he was just not going to uh, have anymore, and he I don't know if he has a means of playing cassettes. That might be the reason why he got rid of it, but uh, hey, um, his loss is my gain. So, yeah. He, he'd heard of how I'm starting to get into cassettes, and so he offered that one up to me, and I did not hesitate to uh, take, a, take him up on it. And then this next item here, which is also from the early 90s. It, oh, oh no, it's uh, 87. Excuse me. I thought it was the 90s. Uh, Suzanne Vega with her album Solitude Standing. And yes, this is the album that had her, kind of her breakthrough hit, Tom's Diner. And uh, yes, I also have the cassette. The cassette I picked up at a store up in Salem a couple months ago. I couldn't leave without buying at least one cassette from the guy. So, and so that's the reason why I got it. And one of the very first cassettes that I actually paid for with money in, what was it, 30 years or something. So, and uh, yeah. And for those of you who are uh, music trivia aficionados, uh, the song Tom's Diner, uh, the acapella version, is a song that helped bring about the perfection, well, such as it is perfection of the mp3 music format yes that is the song that the engineer who developed mp3 codex uh experimented on to try and uh, eliminate as much of the loss uh, signal loss and uh, distortion as possible so kind of a, a cool little uh, trivia note in the foot in the footnotes of music so, so that was neat and then the final item on my list is one of my personal favorites from the 80s i think yes 1988 yanni don't laugh uh, 
as I've mentioned before when I've mentioned Yanni a couple of times, uh, his early music had a lot of life to it. It wasn't the snooze fest that his later albums have become. And this was the first album that I really, really caught my ear. The song Chameleon Days on this album is just great. It's one of those really uh, anthemic, propulsive kind of uh, songs uh, uh, that he was uh, he was actually pretty darn good at in his early years. Yes, um, I've had the CD for forever, and uh, the cassette I came into thanks to my friend Sue, who gave me that big, huge lot of 200-plus cassettes, and uh, several other Yanni t tapes were also in that lot, so uh, thank you again, Sue. But uh, yeah, and I think I the first format I think I owned this on was actually cassette, so I'm coming, f coming full circle in a way to uh, reacquiring that on cassette. So yes, I hope you enjoyed this little update on my albums, albums that I have owned or still own on more than one format over the years. Uh, and maybe in another nine or ten months the list will be even longer, who knows. But anyway, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.